Okay. Engine is fully rebuilt now. Got this new cover because, you know, I don't think that one's going to work. And, um, yeah, let's get to it. Put this on. We'll put the engine back in the bike and I'll try to get it running today. Alright, we're going to have to do a voiceover here because watching the footage back, I... I almost hung myself listening to my stupid ass voice talk about oh shut the fuck up all right so we're doing it this way now basically all you need to know is putting grease on the seal and all that's gonna do is one kind of helps it seal and two it helps me when I'm actually putting the seal in so that it doesn't just fall out of the groove that it's in sometimes they're not like the right size but yeah and then it kind of mostly helps for gaskets when you're needing to take it back apart or the next person who takes it back apart so it's just always nice to put grease on the seals or the gaskets that you use or even the bolts I like to put grease on all my big bolts like the swing arm bolt and my engine mount bolts and the bolts that get that don't ever really get taken out and those you normally put anti-seize on but I don't have any so grease works just fine with that and honestly I don't know how long this goes for I don't know what else to say I I'm scared to unmute it because I didn't watch this far because I already started tying the rope let's just skip and oh my god, we're back. I still sound like a hairless rat that just craw crawled out of the sewer and looked at the sun for the first time in 40 years and just started burning. <sighs> anyway, sorry, I just had a flashback. <laughs> Alright, anyways, all that you need to know is I'm putting the engine case on. Ooh, look at that. I can put some screws in a hole. The only important thing here is, people, you do not need to tighten these super tight. All it takes is like two foot pounds. All right, you just need them snug. You don't need them tight, just snug. That goes for all of the engine bolts and really just all the bolts on the bike period. They just need to be tight enough but you don't need to crank them down. I just take two fingers and tighten them down with two fingers. And that's for my little T-handle and with the wrench. I kind of just put my hand on the very top with the wrench and use my thumb to push. And that's all you need. All right, we're going to give this we're going to give this frame a little shoe shine before we put the engine in. Just a little one cuz not going to clean it right now. Alright, now we're going to put the engine in. All right, engine's now in. Let's put the mounts on. All right, now for the engine mounts, we're just going to do the same thing that we did for the gasket. We're just going to take some grease, get it nice and uh, smooth. Usually you put like anti-seize, but I don't have some, so grease will do just fine. And then take the bolt. We're just gonna slip it in for now. Check it all through. Alright, that's one bolt. And we're gonna do that for all of them. I'll see you when all the bolts are in. All the engine mounts are in except for the swing arm. Let's put that in. 
I know it's going to be a surprise, but we're going to grease it up. This just helps it for me if I need to take it apart again or the next person who takes it apart. Hopefully we won't need to do that though. Come over here. Start it. Lift it up. There's a little notch at the end that slides in this hole. And mine was just a little crooked, so I couldn't pound it in the rest of the way. Now it's all good. Pound it in the rest of the way. Boom. All greased up. It's in all the way. And look at that. Perfect. Now let's put the bottom shock mount bolt on. Grease it up. Alright, let's now put the front sprocket. We got new seals. Both just go over on there like that. All right, so those two O-rings went behind this little thing, and they'll seat right in there as the seats around it. So those both go on there. This will go on, seat in, and the sprocket. Then we have a little seat clip. That. Seat it in place. So, you know doesn't fly off when you're riding. Actually gonna get a screwdriver here. Just gonna get a flat head. Yep, seat it down. There. I don't know if you heard that click, but clicked in. I got to do put this on it's kind of junky but being a little cheap boy and just gonna go with it but well we'll just put the kickstarter on and um yeah we'll connect the clutch cable and put some fluids in it and i'll come back when all that's done and we can see if she starts All right, so this calls for 850 milliliters. Focus, you can do it. Focus, focus, the right thing. Oh my God. 
eight fifty. Bikes come together, and um, you may notice that there is no muffler on it at the moment. That's because it is in two pieces. So I will need to weld that back up. Uh, I'll just get the angle right, and then I'll weld it back up, stick it in, bolt it on. Now we should be good. All right, everything's hooked up, all the wiring, except for the kill switch. I didn't even realize that's uh, in there. This bolt's not on. Don't even know where it is, to be honest, but I'm not taking it for a little test ride, so it's okay to just start up. Gotta rewire the kill switch. There is no leaks, which is very, very relieving that because, like I said earlier, this engine has been completely rebuilt, so cases have been apart, new top end, new bearings, seals, bottom end was good. Actually, no, the transmission, I needed a whole new transmission, uh, so rebuilt the transmission, rebuilt the top end, new bearings while I was down there, rebuilt the swing arm, uh, I'm going to have to rebuild the shock linkage. Uh, the rear wheel bearings are shot too. Rebuilt the forks. Uh, Pro uh, Gold Series FMF. Yeah, it's behind the cylinder out. It's not big board or anything because I think that's stupid. But yeah, sun's setting. It's looking nice. Let's get this baby fired up. Alright, it's got good compression. Feels real good. Let's see if she starts up. All right, before you judge, I got the boot on, but it's only because there's a giant hole in my shoe from kicking over bikes, and it's starting to really hurt. Yes, on, soaks on. Look at this Samsung wannabe ass three pixels a second quality right here. That is some, dude, you can't even, you can barely even see the sparks happening, but you, you get what's happening. God, that sucks. All right, we adjusted the fuel air screw mixture by a few turns and a half. Probably gonna idle really high when I start it up. I'll just adjust it from there, but let's see if she goes now. Well, it runs. Maybe that wasn't the... That was so freaking loud. A straight pipe two-stroke? Oh, it sounds good, though. I can't hear jack shit right now. Boop. 
All right, well, let's fix the kill switch because I haven't even heat cycled it yet. There's some more things with the uh, uh, rear shock while I was running. Um, gas started pissing everywhere. Thank God it was gas, not something else, though. Because I didn't tighten up the boots or anything. Because I didn't honestly think of the consequence of shutting it off like that. Because I honestly just wanted to, to start it. But she runs. She runs beautifully, actually. Yeah, I was just coming out of the boot. All right, well, let's fix up the wiring. Let's tinker with a couple more things, but she runs. Uh, I pulled the spark plug out and it is soaking wet. So we are running tad rich, just a fuel air, fuel air screw, some more. Try to get it right. Um, and yeah, the wiring is really old and probably gonna need to get some new ones, but we'll figure it out. Doing a voice over here because you know I forgot to do a transition and actually explain what I'm gonna do next. So as you can see, welding up the pipe, and those are some horrible welds. Like God, my grandma could weld better than that. But to be fair, this is my third time actually welding something, and I learned how to weld like a week ago. So screw you. I was proud of that. Still am. So look at that. It didn't even turn out horrible. Welds at the top, didn't do those, so those are ugly, and it's not my fault. But, look, hey, I think I did pretty good. Now let's see how it fits on the actual bike. Alright, just welded it up. No. Let's put it on and see if it fits right. It's looking way better now. Fits like a glove. Alright, I ordered up this new kill switch. Just on eBay used one, so... We'll take this junky one off, and I already took that other shitty wiring off, and um, hopefully this one will work. And I didn't just buy a piece of shit. Yeah, it should work, and then I can heat cycle it. So I'll um, get back to you when I'm on my first test ride. Kill switch works. Idle's really high. Uh, can't tune the fuel air screw in anymore. So we're gonna have to tinker with the jets in the car a little bit, but should be good. All right, as you saw in the last clip, uh, when it was running, it was running super high, and I figured out that's because when the handlebars are turned to the right like this, it pulls the throttle cable, and it basically just revs it up like you're going at half throttle because the the line the throttle cable is ran on the left side of the frame so that as you can see when I turn to the right it pulls the cable tight and it basically pulls it a little bit so I'm gonna have to reroute that um, so we'll do that and then we'll get the back brake set up I'll show you what I mean really quick when I turn the handlebars Yeah. 
right, so I got this uh, used back brake assembly off of eBay, and since it's used, I'm gonna clean out the lines and clean off the brake pads and just clean everything up because it's used and get all that yucky old brake fluid out. While this time lapse is playing, I'm just gonna teach you all how to bleed the brakes. And this goes for front brake or back brake, it doesn't matter, they're both the same. Um, so let's get started. First things first, there is a little nipple on the back brake and the front brake, uh, the actual caliper. And I'll put a picture up on screen, but there's a little rubber cap over it. You just pop that off. There should be an eight millimeter, uh, the whole nipple is like a nut. And you just pump the brakes down as like hard and as far as it'll go. And then you break it loose, opening it up so air will flush out, and that's what bleeding the brakes is. You're just uh, flushing out all the air and the lines and the brakes. So you just repeat that process of pushing the brake pedal all the way down, and then you're gonna uh, break open the line, or break open the nipple so the air comes out, and then you're gonna close it. Make sure you close it, and you're, hand you're still pushing down on the brake so you're not, um, opening it and then letting the brake pedal back up because that'll just suck air in. So you're just repeating that process over and over again. And pushing the brake pedal down as hard as you can, as far as it'll go. You don't have to like put a lot of force on it. You're just pushing it down and then you're breaking that nipple loose. Air will come out and then you'll just um, tighten it back up and bring the brake pedal back up, push it down again and just repeat that process until fluid comes out and once fluid comes out you're all good brakes are bled and it might take um, like 10 minutes or so but and sometimes you don't always hear the air flushing out so don't get it like oh no it's not working it's it's working if you made it this far I just want to say thank you because it's my first video don't really expect a whole lot from it but um, my dream kind of is just to build up a community and teach people all I know about this stuff. I love doing this and I just want to share the information. I have big plans for the future. I recently just got a CR500. It's an 84, first one they ever made. I'm super excited to start working on that. I have a YFZ450 that I'm working on. Lots of plans for the future and hopefully I can um, build up a community with y'all and I can I don't have a use for them, I just rebuild them, so I would like to give them to y'all when I rebuild them, and I'm going to get into, like, I have powder coating stuff and um, all these plans that I have for the future, so I'm super excited and hope that I continue to grow, but if you like this, uh, please subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks.